I'm Austin from Austin's Nerdy Things. Today we'll be talking about how to turn this $12 USB GPS into a highly accurate microsecond level accurate NTP source for a Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi. This is the GPS. We will be connecting it with a couple of wires and running through some software. So on the screen behind me is the blog post for this video and I will be doing a mix of live video as well as some screen shots um, and some screen recordings. So let's get going. Okay, so here we have the GPS module in question, the GT-U7. Uh, we've got the default uh, antenna hooked up to it, which I have not actually found a need to replace yet. This antenna has been working very, very well. Um, so I did go ahead and solder up the pins. Um, I've also attached some wires here. Um, so the order, uh, let's see if we can focus in close enough, uh, is from right to left. We have VN ground RX TX PPS. And so it just so happens that this aligns perfectly with the Raspberry Pi if you start on the second pin of the on the row of the outer edge of the board. Um, so I went back, I already recorded this part once. I went back and double checked stuff and according to how I have things written down and what's on this board here, um, I, it should need we should need to switch the RX and the TX, but I tried it the first time and it did not work. Um, and then in the middle of recording this video uh, last time, I swapped them and everything came in. So um, we're just gonna stick these through straight straight through like this. Um, you know the blue is gonna be blue down here, red's gonna be red down here, and we are going to put it in on starting on the second pin for the voltage uh, yeah, okay sometimes I'm better at getting these all attached at once than others let's see here okay decent amount of fumbling later we are done so you can see that we've got a blinking light here uh, which means there is already a lock um, blue to blue uh, right to left according to the pinout on the board voltage ground rx tx pps we do have data coming in so let me just uh whip this up on the screen here so here's that so we've got data coming in we've got it locked and we've got it wired up all right, so now that we have the GPS unit wired up to the Raspberry Pi, we will proceed with configuring the Raspberry Pi to read the serial NMEA signals coming from the GPS as well as the pulse per second output. Uh, so this is an old picture. Uh, this is with the um, older GPS unit that I was using. Um, either way, it's still the same idea. We have the uh, PPS, voltage, ground, RX, TX. Uh, so we hooked up to the same pins on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we'll skip over this. You can read this if you want uh, for do you actually need time this accurate and the answer is you probably don't. Uh, so where we can start is with updating the Raspberry Pi. Um, and so I'm already logged into the Raspberry Pi here um, on the right and we will just follow along on the left uh, with the commands and so on and so forth. So. Um, I already ran these, uh, do apt update, do apt upgrade, um, and then you want to install these packages, um, which are the various tools we need for running uh, with the accurate time. PPS tools is pulse per second stuff. GPSD is GPS daemon, uh, which is uh, what we'll actually be using for the time stuff. Um, GPSD clients and Python GPS do some helper things, and Crony is the timekeeping software that will read the PPS signals uh, as well as the info from GPSD. Um, okay, so next up we need to add um, a couple lines to slash boot slash config.txt. Uh, the main one is DT overlay is, uh, I don't actually know what DT stands for. We're basically telling Raspberry Pi, hey, we've got a pulse per second source hooked up to a GPIO pin, and that GPIO pin is pin 18. GPIO is a general purpose input output. Um, and so this is necessary for PPS. If you want to get the NMEA data, you also have to enable UART and set the baud rate. 
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, echo these. <clears throat> And so you can actually just copy and paste these and that will append it right to the end of the, oh, it looks like I double click there twice. All right, um, so what happens there is I should have done that line by line. So let's just sudo nano slash boot slash config dot txt, uh, page down. All right, so we've got, all we have to do is add this. Now we're going to try it with a higher baud rate because this is this GPS module does have a higher baud rate. We're going to try 57.6, which is the default. Control O, Control X to save and then exit. Um, and now we also need to add uh, PPS GPIO to modules. Um, so now let's just uh, see what we have here in modules. Uh, and there we go. So we have our uh, PPS GPIO, and now we need to reboot. <clears throat> now we need to sudo reboot. So this is what I uh, covered in the first part. Um, I used these pin descriptions. Uh, basically the voltage is the pin two and four, uh, which on the row closest uh, to the video is pins two and three, pin, uh, sorry, pins one and two, Pin three is ground, pin four is RX, pin five is TX, pin six uh, is the PPS. So I will add in a new visual for this other GPS module. Uh, I also have an antenna, um, which is in use uh, for this module downstairs hooked up to another Raspberry Pi, but uh, I don't actually, it seems to be sensitive enough that I haven't not needed a antenna anywhere. Uh, here's a picture of where I have the antenna. This is in our basement. Um, you can see the steps coming down here with uh, the full rack of st stuff I have here. Dell R710, uh, 1U white box, uh, brocade switch, 3D printer, that kind of stuff. And, and so this works fine. There's usually uh, 9 to 11 satellites locked on. Um, but I have just put the other, uh, this current GPS module, the uh, GTU7, just somewhere up here. And it works fine uh, with the antenna that's included. Okay, so let's log back in. It should be done rebooting by now. There we go, that should be it. Okay, so first check that the PPS module is loaded. <clears throat> All right, so the output should look like this. Yes, it does. Now we're gonna check for PPS pulses. Boom, 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 boom. So we're getting PPS pulses. This is this is good. Um, and so it says the output should spit out a new line every second. It looks something like this. Um, and it does look something like that. And so uh, the output, um, it looks like it's two milliseconds off. So we'll get we'll get a lot closer than that. Um, okay, next up we need to edit GPSD to have it start immediately upon boot. Oh, it looks like our little sleepy daughter's waking up. Uh, let me turn down the sound on that baby monitor. Uh, all right, let's see what this looks like. Let's see if I can finish up. And just type that is not going to do anything, so we're going to need to nano that. And further, we're going to need to sudo nano that. I think I already have these set because I was uh, attempting something else here. Um, all right, so we're going to change this uh, AMA0 to... I'm going to change it to uh, TTYS0. As well as PPS0. And we'll reboot again. All right, so where we're at is GPS Mon is not actually outputting anything. Um, so I think I need to open up the serial port, um, which is done through Raspi config interface options, serial port. Would you like a login shell to be accessible over serial? Uh, what's the answer to this? Is no, serial port hardware, yes. Okay, and then we'll reboot. There we go. So needed to get that uh, serial port activated. Um, I will definitely put that in the notes. So here we've got the GPS uh, for good measure. Um, and we do have a good measure on this. Um, it looks like it's a little bit slower than I would like. Um, I don't know if it's actually using that 57.6. Uh, the T off is it's consistent. 
130 ish or so 130 milliseconds uh, the PPS is showing them are pretty pretty close um, so I can end that uh, and now we need to configure crony to use our new sources so we'll do sudo nano slash etc slash crony slash crony dot conf and uh, I've already got a couple things in here um, let's see so these would be the lines in question from the previous attempt at this um, when I wasn't trying that hard alright so we're going to do ref clock shm0 delay uh, what did I say it was like 0.130 ish 0 0.130 seconds which is 130 milliseconds um, refid it's the reference ID will be nmea ref clock shm sorry we'll do pps is slash dev slash pps zero ref id on that is going to be pps uh, and then i think we're good control o control x pseudo system control restart crony and then we can watch crony c sources to see where we're at <clears throat> Okay, so uh, it picked up our NMEA and our PPS. Um, it should log on to the PPS soon. All right, the reach values are creeping up. It's still using the uh, other PPS source in the house, um, which is Pi NTP. Um, so it's currently looking like, uh, I don't know why that one's so far, actually I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi right now, that's probably why part of this is going on. Okay, so we have now locked on to our PPS, the one that we just uh, hooked up. Uh, we're currently 3,000 microseconds off, which, okay, now we're not, now we're a lot less now, we're 20 microseconds off. And so the title of this post was indeed Microsecond Accurate NTP. Um, so we're still only at 20 microseconds. This will come down. Okay, now we're at 0 .7, 0 0.7 microseconds. This is 708 nanoseconds off. It's pretty accurate. <clears throat> um, if you want your NMEA source to also be uh, close, you'll have to run some uh, statistics output. Um, which you can check in the millisecond accurate post about how to record the statistics to see what this offset actually needs to be. I put in 130. Uh, I I'm not sure what it needs to be. Um, it feels. I mean, it says it's 126 milliseconds off, but it looks like it's like that didn't go into account or something. So we'll see. So we're now at uh, 2,000 nanoseconds off, uh, which is two microseconds, now it's 450 nanoseconds. Uh, it's actually, what is the command? Um, I think it's crony C tracking. Uh, yeah, so this is what, this is a second by second. This is how many seconds off it thinks it is um, for the PPS. So this is, with only three digits showing anything significant, this is in nanoseconds. So this is 312 nanoseconds, 288 nanoseconds, 264 nanoseconds. Um, so this is pretty close. Now it's 1.4 microseconds. Um, we're spot on. And, uh, and over time, this will slowly tune itself in. Um, things that make the time go fast or slow is the ambient temperature around the Pi, um, the load on the Pi, which uh, makes the processor work harder, which makes the temperature change, um, and then GPS reception. Um, I didn't actually see how many GPS satellites we had, but um, it should be, you know, basically if you have more than six, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, but there are precise timing chips that prefer satellites that are directly overhead, uh, which apparently results in better timing. Um, there's also the same timing GPS modules uh, have a mode that you can set um, that says this is a stationary GPS. You know, only look at the time, don't actually look at the position, um, which also helps. So, um, 
So yeah, let's see here. Uh, verify the server's using it. Um, so we saw that. Uh, it says after a couple minutes you can check again. So let's let's check again here. Yeah, 250 nanoseconds off. This is this is locked right on. This is exactly what we needed to. So in the post here, uh, it looked like we got down to 289 nanoseconds off. Um, you yeah, know, that's about as good as it's gonna get. So so we're done. Um, Hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope you learned something. Go ahead and click like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Uh, I will also put a link to the blog post in the video description as well as a link to the $12 USB uh, GPS that we used to accomplish this. So um, that's it. Signing off for today. Check back uh, soon. See if another video is up. Thanks, guys. Bye.